Hello, Rumble World. Mac Daddy 1911 Make One here with the Shady Tree Survivalists. M14 rifle stoppages and immediate actions to take. This information was compiled from Field Manual 23 8 as well as Technical Manual 9 1005 223 12. Um, both of these were Department of Army issued to the uh, different branch or different sections of the service in order to keep the rifles up and running and of course um, to help the individual soldier and or unit armor to uh, find out issues and to remedy it. Um, anything where there's an asterisk, ladies and gentlemen, that is something from a uh, non-military specification rifle, non-military rifle. Um, dealing with uh, receivers, bolts, op rods, trigger groups, springs, and magazines, and so forth, any and all parts that are not original, quote unquote, GI or military specification. And those will be added in as we go along. Stoppages, number one cause, or the number one issue is failure to feed. Uh, number one cause is weak or broken spring, magazine spring. Replace the magazine and or spring with a mil spec magazine or spring. Number two cause for a failure to feed, damaged or deformed magazine same thing applies replace the magazine and or spring with a mil spec magazine or or spring or in this case if it's a deformed magazine the tube is probably ruined so yeah you'll definitely have to replace it number three calls for a failure to feed damaged or deformed stripping lug on the bottom of the bolt that is what engages the the uh rim of the cartridge to push it up and out of or out and into out of the magazine into the chamber replace the bolt note a new bolt must be lapped in for proper headspace that is not a tiny little thing okay it's not as difficult if you have the m14 complete assembly guide i highly recommend that book and it'll detail the operations and the tools needed to do so. Uh, number four, failure to feed. Number four, cause, short recall. C, short recall, you'll see it later. Number five, failure to feed, cause, dirty ammunition or magazine. Clean the ammunition and or magazine, you filthy beast. Number six, weak or broken op rod spring. Replace spring with mil spec springs. No extra power. Remember, timing and rhythm is everything. Number seven, failure to feed. Cause number seven, restricted movement of or damaged operating rod itself. Clean and lube the tube spring and spring guide. Op rod, if it is damaged, you want to replace that with a new mil spec part, okay? No garbage. And when you lube it, of course it depends on the weather, but anything above freezing, you can use thin grease. That is the best. You want to lube the tube itself, the passages, the receiver area, the op rod guide, the op rod spring, and op rod spring guide. All that needs to be greased. Okay? Or lubricated with the proper lubricant for the cold temperatures if it's minus uh, 32 Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius. Stoppages, failure to load, number two. Uh, failure to load. Number one, cause for failure to load is a dirty or deformed, dirty or deformed ammunition. Clean or replace. Number two, cause for failure to load, damaged magazine tube. Replace magazine with mil spec. In other words, CMI, Springfield Armory, or a genuine GI original issue magazine. 
Number three calls for failure to load. Dirty magazine. Clean the damn thing. Number four calls for failure to load. Damage or broken spring. Replace magazine and or spring with mil spec magazine or spring. Number five, calls for failure to load loose or damaged floor plate on the magazine. Replace the magazine floor plate or the entire magazine. Um, you can buy kits where it's just a follower, the spring, and the floor plate, but, I mean, if you're going to go through that expense, just buy a whole damn new magazine. Unless it's a, you know, it's a good magazine, of course, buy the parts to rebuild it. Uh, stoppages. Number three, magazine not retained in the weapon. Cause, number one, magazine lacks damage, out of spec, or deformed. It is not properly heat treated. Replace or repair mag latch. Magazine catch. Replace with GI mil spec part or, my recommendation for a modern rifle, Sadlack Tactical Extended Magazine Catch. Okay? Latch, catch, whatever you want to call it. Magazine not retained in weapon. Cause number two, magazine latch spring damaged or deformed. Also, replace the spring with a, the mill spec part. Uh, number three, magazine latch plate damaged or missing on the magazine. That is the big block uh, at the rear of the magazine. Um, so replace it. GI spec magazine. Okay? If the magazine, that, that little plate is damaged or missing, there's very little you can do to repair it, chunk it. Okay? You might want to keep the magazine itself as a training aid, maybe, but get a damn GI spec magazine. My recommendation CMI or Springfield Armory. Number four, magazine not retained in a weapon. Number four, cause deformed or damaged operating rod spring guide. Remember, it's the nose of that spring guide that catches in the little square hole on the front face of the magazine, okay? Um, replace the op rod spring guide with a GI part, a mil spec part, or Sadlack National Mag guide recommended by yours truly, Mac Daddy 1911A1. Uh, number five cause of magazine not retained in weapon, locking recesses, this, or locking recess, the square hole at the top front of the magazine is either deformed or wallowed out, or as uh, southern people like to say, wallered, it's W-A-L-L-E-R-E-D, it's wallered out, come on. Replace the magazine and or just the tube with a mill spec magazine. Again, don't buy junk. You won't get crappy results. Number six, calls for magazine not to be retained in the weapon. Magazine not fully inserted. User error. Remove and re reinstall properly. Listen for the click. Page two, stoppages. Number four, magazine inserts with difficulty or not at all. <clears throat> bolt is closed with on a load, trying to insert a loaded magazine with the bolt closed. Okay, I see this all the time. I see it on AR-15 guys too. You don't have much room to compress those top rounds because there's not much uh, room left in the magazine. Open the bolt and lock it open. Then insert the magazine and it should go in. If not, let's go on. Magazine inserts with difficulty or not at all. Reason number two, cause number two. Bent or deformed magazine. Replaced with a mil spec magazine. Number three, cause for magazine inserts with difficulty or not at all. Excessive dirt in receiver or on magazine or around the... Uh, the locking, or the uh, magazine catch, lock. Number three, clean it inside and out. The receiver, 
the uh, trigger group really well, and of course your magazines. <clears throat> Number four calls. Magazine inserts with difficulty or not at all. Number four calls. Cartridge not fully seated in the magazine, so the bullet nose is sticking out and is it will not allow the the, the uh, it to be compressed down in the magazine. Okay, so the cartridge is not fully seated in the magazine. It needs the base of the cartridge needs to be at the back wall against the back wall of the magazine. Load the cartridge, and I just noticed I didn't put the G. But load the cartridge in the magazine completely so that the base of the cartridge is against the back wall of the magazine. Okay, magazine inserts with difficulty or not at all. Cause number five, deformed or damaged op rod spring guide. The nose of it, as I stated earlier, intersects with a little hole in the front of the magazine at the top of the front. Replace with mill spec spring guide or recommended by me again the Sadlack National Match uh, Spring Guide, which is freaking awesome. Just put it that way. Number six calls for magazine insertion to be difficult or not at all. Out of spec or damaged magazine latch. Replace, repair with mill spec latch. Sadlack extended. Uh, magazine catch is my recommendation again. Um, number seven, magazine latch movement restricted. Clean oil the clean it, oil the pin, replace if out of spec or damaged. Okay? Again, with the side like extended version if you like. Okay, number eight should have been on here, and, and I've been busy, but anyway, eight. Check that the, uh, if it's a wooden stock, check that your liner screws, the two screws that protrude or are recessed in the side of each side of the stock, those screws are tight, and the liner itself um, is tied inside the stock. Another thing, if you've got a cheap magazine, Pro Mag, whatever, it may be too wide, it may be out of spec. If it's rubbing, there's rubbing, rub marks on the sides of the magazine, that's an indication. Either your stock is out of spec, the mag liner, the, um, the liner is loose because of the screws, or your magazine is just too damn wide. So that's number eight. Uh, number Five of stoppages. Bolt fails to close completely. And I reworded it because hell, I had four or five more damn words. I'm like, are you kidding me? Uh, number one calls for this. Cartridge case holding bolt out of battery. Number one remedy. Eject the form cartridge. Clean ammo and chamber of the barrel. Okay, clean that sucker. Number two calls for the bolt fails to close completely. Dirty chamber. You filthy beast. Clean the chamber and the barrel. Number three. Calls for bolt fails to close completely. Extractor does not snap over the rim of the cartridge base. Clean bolt assembly and extractor recess in breech face of barrel. That one uh, was a new one for me. So that was the one you need to look at. Make sure when you're cleaning the chamber and all, and the breech face of the barrel... Want to make sure you get it really clean so that the uh, it has room to do its job. Number four calls for a bolt to fail to close completely. Frozen or block, blocked ejector spring and plunger. Uh, so number four, uh, replace worn extractor and or spring and plunger assembly. Replace eject. Whoop, that's four. Uh, uh, I guess that'll be for both of them, replace ejector. Uh, number five, restricted movement of or damaged op rod. Yeah, I guess that's what it was. It was the ejector I was talking about. Replace that ejector. But number five, restricted movement of or damaged op rod. Clean lubricate op rod guide, op rod itself, spring and its spring guide, the recesses in the, um, the bolt, 
bolt lugs, not the bolt, the, re, uh, the receiver, the bolt lugs, the recesses in the receiver, as I already said, and the track. Okay, I'm going to make sure all that's clean and well lubricated so it'll smoothly operate. You put grease on your rifle and you'll see what smooth operation looks like, I promise you. Number six, calls for a bolt that fails to close completely. Bolt not fully rotated and locked in the receiver. Uh, six, replace op rod with a mil spec part. Reset, um, also on that one there, if it's not fully rotated, you may have some crud in your recesses in the receiver. The mud video, we did that. We uh, were speaking about that. It cannot. Or if your damn receiver's out of spec or your bolt slightly out of spec, the tail of the firing pin may not go down into the recess, cut into the bridge under a receiver and allow it to be struck by the hammer. Uh, bolt fails to completely close or close completely. Number seven calls weak or broken op rod spring. Replace with mill spec lube with grease on that spring. Number six, failure to fire. Calls number one, bolt not fully forward and locked. Clean breech face, the chamber itself, bolt lugs, recesses, and grease. Calls number two, defective ammunition. Follow procedures for misfires. Toss that bad freedom pill. Number three, firing pin worn, damaged, movement restricted. Clean the firing pin tunnel. Replace firing pin if damaged. Install new one or cleaned one dry. Do not oil, grease, or anything else the firing pin. That is supposed to go in dry. Number two of part two of three. Visually inspect firing pin protrusion at face of bolt where it comes out and strikes the primer. You want to check around there. Number three, visually inspect bridge. Firing pin cut out in bridge. Make sure it's not beat all the hell or whatever. And you can do that with the bolt closed and it should be able to, to move forward and backwards just a little bit. And if it's not, then there's something damaged in there. Number four calls broken hammer. Replace hammer or trigger group with a mill spec part. Number five, see number four. But number five, we can broken hammer spring and or its guide. See number four. Number six, hammer lugs, trigger lugs, or sear worn or broken sufficiently to cause hammer to ride bolt forward. Uh, that was number six. Also see number four, replace hammer trigger group with mill spec. Number seven, this asterisk. This is something I added. Note. Possible cause, broken or deformed hammer and or trigger pins that they pivot on. Number seven, replace pins with mill spec pins, grease when you install them, okay? While I'm filming this, uh, Putin just put his nuclear forces on high alert, and I would imagine the United States did the same damn thing, so who knows? <laughs> we may not be here to finish watching this. Number seven, stoppages for the M14 rifle or M1A. Short recoil. We'd already been told to look at short recoil, so we'll go through this very carefully. Cause number one is restrictive movement of or damaged op rod. That's your operating rod. Number one, visually inspect for binding, clean, and lubricate. Grease, again. Receiver, bolt, barrel, op rod, spring guide, spring, op rod spring guide, and it's spring. Op rod guide, track on the receiver. Okay. So if you have a restricted movement of or damaged op rod, there you go. On the damaged op rod, uh, if it's damaged or out of spec, replace with a mill spec part. Those are not cheap. 
Um, there are companies that are making drop forged ones now. You might want to check around. Maybe you'll find a good deal. A real deal M14 original will cost you a lot. Uh, B, shock buff, extra power recall spring, remove, replace with mill spec. Okay, those three causes or all those causes there could be part of your issue. Number two cause for a short recoil, gas plug loose or missing. If it is missing, you bet your ass the piston has fallen out. Tighten and or replace with mill spec pieces and parts or better. Number three, bolt binding. Clean and lube the receiver, bolt lugs, roller, and cam in op rod. Okay, the, the hollowed out area, the hump of the op rod, you won't agree, put some grease in there. And yes, 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 grease, grease, grease. Number four calls for short recoil. Gas cylinder lock not fully installed blocks gas port. Right here. Number eight, failure to extract. Spindle valve is closed, especially. This happens a lot with new guys who do not read the book, okay? Open, your screwdriver slot is vertical. Closed, your uh, screwdriver slot in the spindle valve is horizontal. Open the damn thing. Number two, cartridge seized in the chamber. Remove cartridge and clean chamber, okay? 2A, use a broken shell extractor to get it out. In the disassemble, the uh, removing M14 from an EBR chassis video I just put up, I have a broken shell extractor in the grip of the rifle just for such as this. You should buy one also. You can get them at Brownells, Midway USA, and many, many other great places. And you can do that for your AR-15, your AK-47, your SKS. They have these broken shell extractors. Get one. Short recall, see you above. I think it was, um, well, number seven there, so there you go. Already covered it. Damage or deform extractor. Replace the extractor with a GI specification drop forge piece or a quality aftermarket such as a Fulton Armory, okay? Number five, weak, deformed, or frozen extractor plunger assembly. Number five, replace the plunger assembly. The whole thing. Me always grease the damn spring. Period. You will, you won't. That's your, your choice. Number six, rupture or separated case. We just covered that. Use a broken shell extractor to get the damn thing out. The military says remove cartridge casing. Broken shell extractor in abbreviations uh, of, uh, of whatever the hell you call them. My brain went blank. Um, Anyway, number nine, failure to eject. Number one, cause, short recall. See, short recall, number seven. Number two, weak, deformed, or frozen ejector, spring, and plunger. Replace ejector assembly, lube, and grease. Finally, failure to hold bolt open. Number 10, damage, deformed, or out of spec follower. Replace with mill spec parts. Your follower is in the magazine. That's what the bullets, the cartridges ride up the inside the magazine, all right. Okay, uh, cause number two, damage or deformed bolt lock itself. Replace with mill spec part. Or, better yet, upgrade with a Smith Enterprises Incorporated SEI extended bolt block. 
Some people call it a bolt stop. This is what the Army calls it. Okay? Number three, bolt lock movement is restricted due to crud, screwed up spring, whatever. Clean bolt lock recess in the receiver is their recommendation. Weak or broken magazine spring will not push it up hard enough. That is always a possibility. Replace the uh, spring with a mil spec spring or the entire magazine. Again, my recommendation, CMI or Springfield Armory or a absolutely known uh, GI magazine from back in the day when the rifle was per first produced. Um, I hope this is helpful to you guys. This is more information than I have uh, put out on a lot of these because I get a lot of questions, um, especially when it comes to in certain magazines um, and failure to cycle. Okay, I don't think... Uh, the short recall, okay? Short recall would be also a uh, failure to cycle all the way, okay? This is all part of the cycle in any damn way, but that would cover that also. But anywho, I, my phone's going crazy. I hope that we're all not glowing in the damn dark by the time this video is out. Um, I put up a video slamming hell out of Putin and the Russians, so more than likely they got my house um, targeted for a nuke even as we speak uh, damn them to hell anyway and if I see them coming shoot first and ask questions later there come on